Hello everyone and welcome to this postgraduate webinar series. My name is Dr. Lan Roy Parr and I'm a lecturer in food business at Cork University Business School. Uh, I'm very happy to welcome you today where you're going to hear more information about the MSc program Food Business and Innovation. We prepared some great content for you today. So uh, today we have with us Professor Joe Bo. He is the program director of the MSc FBI. We also have current students, Madeline and Travis. And we also have with us, which is a special pleasure to have with us today, our alumni, Kate and Rachel. So uh, today's content is going to be a little bit more about the program. Uh, we have some details that you might be interested in, in terms of the structure of the program, how it all works together, uh, where does the placement fit and so on. You're also going to hear interesting stories from our students who are currently doing their placements and also students who went out there and are working uh, in some amazing companies after they finished their MSc in FBI. You're also going to hear some uh, information about career opportunities and all about the placement uh, and also the application process. Uh, but before all of that, I would like to welcome our Professor Joe Bo, who is going to tell us a little bit more about the program. So Joe, over to you now. Lovely, thank you very much, Lana, for that introduction. And we're going to uh, talk to you a little bit about the program uh, at this beginning part of the um, seminar. Um, so basically, this is the MSc in for Business Innovation. Okay, I'm gonna talk through a different uh, parts of the program, basically. The MSc in for Business is a one-year full-time program. Okay, so it includes a five-month placement, uh, which is, a, from my point of view, a key part of the program, basically, where students go out in placement, work in different companies, do different projects, and I'll talk a bit about that later on. Uh, the areas that we study on the program do things like food marketing, digital media, for example, entrepreneurship, uh, innovation, uh, we do things like problem solving, for example, but also underpinned by things like sustainability uh, that is huge across food supply chains. And we also focus on things like branding and consumer insights. So it's a really important program. It's hands-on. Uh, we have uh, developed a program that has highly transferable skills uh, to other sectors, for example. And the program came about when we designed this, uh, bringing together two award-winning programs into one that really fitted what industry wanted, but also what students wanted. And you'll see when I go through it, the different parts of the program. So in terms of the masters itself, it provides students with the skills to analyze food supply chains. You know, we see food supply chains are very dynamic. There's a lot of things happening when we look at things like innovation, sustainability, for example, uh, health issues, um, all the different aspects of food service markets, for example, and also the very competitive retail market. So all the different key components of food supply chains, what we've done is we put them into one master's program, coupled with a placement. Um, and again, what we've done is we've really balanced what industry wants and what were really important, what students wants, but also giving students the key communication, analytical and presentation skills. And you can see on this particular slide, the areas that we cover and do things like food marketing, you know, how we get products to consumers, uh, you know, how food ends up on our plate, for example, how we move from the lab bench to the supermarket shelf, what research we do on consumers, for example, we do a lot of work on understanding the consumer and what consumers want in terms of products. Innovation underpins everything we do in, in society. And we, we try to develop students' skill set on this particular program. Also, entrepreneurship is a key part of it. You know, again, students might look at a career in, a certain company, for example, or a certain industry, they might decide to become entrepreneurs. But it's also about thinking entrepreneurially. You know, how do you use the skills we give you to think entrepreneurial within a company, for example, in an entrepreneurial fashion, for example. And again, as I say, a lot of the skills we develop in this program are transferable. Now, these are program goals. Again, you know, when we set out to develop this program, the whole idea was to develop a program that matched industry and uh, student needs, for example, how students would communicate effectively, for example, you know, really important in industry, in any industry, getting your message across, for example, writing reports to a very high professional standard. Uh, no, goal number two there, the analytical skills. Again, a lot of companies I work with in food and non-food are looking for students to, to, to solve problems, for example. Can you take a framework and apply it to a new industry and can you solve a problem for that industry or that sector 
or that company, for example. And again, within the food industry, for example, we see we saw with COVID-19, the importance of food supply chains. We see integrity being very important, food fraud, for example. All these different things are now become more and more important uh, within food supply chains. And goal five there is about the idea of uh, looking at industry, going into a company and solving a problem. And we'll talk a little bit about this later on. This is the Applied Food Industry Centered Research Project. So rather than going an internship, you're going in to solve a particular problem. And again, these are the skills that stand to students once they leave the particular program. Now, in terms of the structure, what we've done is we've broken down the program into four different areas. The first one there on the top left-hand side are food systems, for example. What's happening across global food markets? Because markets now become global within food, for example. You know, we look at products from Japan, from the United States, from Asia, for example, Australia. All these products have become more and more competitive, marketed within our own markets here, for example. So we have to produce very competitive up-to-date products that really meet a consumer need. We're also looking at things like sustainable food systems. We need a sustainable food system, you know, over the next 10, 20, 30 years to make sure that we can feed our populations, for example, but also do it in a very sustainable way. We also then look at entrepreneurship and innovation. We look at, you know, how you might develop a new product, for example, how you might apply different innovation skills to develop those new products, for example. And again, you know, we've lots of supports for students if they want to become entrepreneurs, for example. You know, could you come on the program, identify an idea and then develop it and develop yourself into an entrepreneur, set up a new company, for example. So we have a lot of supports like that. We, we've really embedded entrepreneurship across this program. And as I say, not just that you may become an entrepreneur, but you think entrepreneurially, for example. Within the marketing side, then we focus on things like uh, marketing insights, category management, food retailing, the Aldi, the Lidl's of this world, for example, huge opportunities there across traditional food retailers, for example, uh, and understanding how and why food retailing will change over the next 10 years, for example. Lana does a module on digital media, very important area. You know, how do you use digital media to market a product? Uh, but also, how do we look at food branding? How do we develop a brand and how do we get the, the semiotics of that brand developed across uh, a company, but also across the sector? And then at the bottom there, you can see we have our food industry center research project. This is where you go into industry, you work on a problem. So you take the skills that you've developed from uh, the program and you go into industry at that stage. And so this brings the different parts together uh, in a more focused uh, application within the, the company. We work with a lot of different companies. Uh, you know, we're very much driven by industry, what industry wants. And again, we're constantly talking to industry about the type of graduate they want, for example. Uh, we have placements within a lot of these companies, for example, but also uh, we have contacts when it comes to employment, for example, as I say, career opportunities, or it could be, for example, placement opportunities. And again, we work very closely in terms of bringing in a lot of these companies to work on problem solving within the class. So some of these companies will come in, for example, Cologne Farm this year came in uh, and students developed a strategy for that particular company. We've had the shack in previous years, for example, all working with students and showing students that these are problems they're facing and then how would students actually address those particular problems. So in terms of the application process, we'll talk a little bit about this later on, but uh, you know, we're doing rolling applications, students who apply, we're offering places to those students. Uh, and the Glambia Scholarship Program, which again, we'll talk about in a few minutes, that will open on the 1st of May. So over to you, Lana. Thank you, Joe. So uh, some other important aspects of this program uh, is, of course, uh, the student experience and what students actually do in terms of the different activities. So as you can see here, uh, we have students working on the real uh, business problems. Joe mentioned the shack. So you can see on the first image there, this is uh, where students actually were presented with an actual problem. And the problem was to develop a, a Christmas donut. So uh, students were actually working in groups and they have to come up with a Christmas donut, not just the design, but also the story behind it. So it was about both developing the product and also developing a story, kind of like the brand thing around the product. So, um, you know, students presented their work. They were great. They were absolutely brilliant. 
and then the company actually decided about the winner and uh, they were actually able to see their product on shelves of uh, the shack. So that, that's just one example how we connect the real business problems that are happening in real time with what our students do. And the best thing is that they can actually see their results, uh, which makes them very proud. Um, another thing is, for example, uh, in one of my modules, students actually develop a digital media marketing uh, campaign. So uh, as you can see in the second picture, uh, students work in groups uh, and they select a company uh, and then they develop a uh, 30 days digital media marketing campaign. And what that gives the students really skills uh, to understand how to create a digital marketing campaign from the start, from very uh, brief description, to the actual point where you have materials to showcase how your digital campaign would look like. And skills such as communication, strategic thinking, design thinking, uh, teamwork, which is really important. All of those skills are combined in uh, this type of module and students actually uh, present it. And uh, it happened in some cases that students select a company which is a local company uh, and after they finish the module they actually show their campaign to the local company and then they actually implement some of the ideas that students present. So again it's a perfect match between the reality uh, what is happening in the industry and what you learn in the in the modules. Uh, also students have an opportunity to join uh, different types of business competitions throughout their masters and this is an opportunity for uh, pitching your new idea that you might have as an individual or uh, as a group and not just to win prizes but also to get acknowledged for your work and you know spread this word about you and your abilities um, that you gain. So it's a very dynamic, very hands-on uh, program uh, that gives you the skills that are very transferable and uh, more importantly, it makes you very employable later on. Uh, what is it all about in terms of what our students say? Uh, again, as you can see here, some of the quotes from students state that uh, it's, it's, it's a pleasure to present, to be able to have the opportunity, the platform where uh, you can actually present your work. Uh, you can also uh, play different roles, uh, as you can see here, for example, Rachel, in this case, was a digital uh, marketing manager for a uh, project in her group. So it's good to kind of like uh, take on different roles while you're doing this project and really practice for reality for what comes after. Uh, also, uh, some other quotes um, mentioned the support that you that you receive. And we do really take pride in, you know, following our students from day one until they graduate and giving support, giving advice uh, on professional paths, but also in terms of the modules, the content, how to best resolve certain uh, challenges that the students are presented. Uh, and also, Joe's mentioned previously, uh, this program uh, has been created uh, to really cover the gap that there is uh, on the market in terms of what industry really wants from the graduates. So being innovative, being creative, thinking like an entrepreneur, but also as an entrepreneur. So to be able to innovate within your place where you are maybe in the company, uh, or if you decide to become an entrepreneur, you have a great, great places to do. So you have all of those uh, little bits and pieces that you need in order to be able to create a business plan, to create a marketing plan, and also to create a digital marketing campaign for your business. So all of this nicely presents uh, what the industry and the students are saying about this program. Uh, we also here have an example from Zoe. This has been just recently published in the Irish Times. Uh, and this article basically kind of follows the story from Zoe and uh, she enrolled in the uh, MSc uh, with Business and Innovation. For example, interestingly, her background was in BCom. And uh, she said she always had a passion about food. And this was like a no brainer, as she says, uh, to enroll in this program because it combined that business side and then the passion for food as well. Uh, and the uh, interesting thing that Zoe mentions is that uh, when the time came for placement, she actually uh, decided to, to, to try with Little and uh, that all led to her new role uh, as a trainee buyer with Little. And very interesting and very practical experience that she gained the program help her to progress in her role. Uh, another interesting example that we like to highlight is also our student Richard. So uh, Richard was also doing our MSc and Food Business Innovation and uh, for his placement he decided to go with a project where he wanted to see if there is a market for a crab cocktail and here on the slide you can actually see his his master thesis uh, which actually translated into an actual 
new product that was launched on the market. So if you already tried the crab cocktail, which is uh, with Dune stores, uh, you know, you can thank us because Richard uh, did it through this thesis. Again, a great example of how something that you learn through the program can actually translate very quickly into a real product uh, on, available uh, on the market. Um, this is another example, and this is basically a combination of your uh, work uh, in one of the modules uh, in the uh, Food Innovation Challenge. This is from uh, this year, uh, and uh, I'm sure you can see here one of our students, Madeline, who is going to be joining us uh, later on. Um, so this is a showcase where students actually worked for two semesters on developing a new food product. And that product can be as, as a physical product, as a service or an app. In recent years, we saw an increased interest in food apps. So we encourage our students to see what is happening uh, on, the, uh, on the market. What are the current trends and bring that into developing a new product. It's a very dynamic process. Again, you work in a group. You trust your teammates to develop everything from the uh, product to the marketing plan to the business plan. And in this particular case, students were actually pitching uh, their new product ideas uh, in collaboration with local enterprise office and uh, they were rewarded for their uh, great ideas. Uh, one of the comments was uh, from, the, from the judges in this competition that they were um, impressed with the level of knowledge and readiness of those products uh, and apps and services that the students uh, created. So again, it's a great kind of like external feedback about the student work uh, and, uh, you know, something that we really take pride in, giving students that opportunity to showcase uh, their work and, uh, you know, having this platform to uh, employ your uh, creative spirit and entrepreneurial spirit uh, as well. Um, so our kind of like style uh, in this MSC FBI is uh, something that we call sustainable business. Uh, in terms of uh, educational style, we practice uh, the uh, business education. Uh, we bring in lots of uh, different speakers uh, in the form of master classes. So we bring people who are, uh, you know, experienced industry leaders or entrepreneurs uh, or producers who actually talk to our students about a particular topic. And then students have an opportunity to interact with those speakers, ask questions. Uh, we also have this uh, pitching sessions where students learn how to pitch their business idea. But that's also important for later on when you are, uh, you know, applying for jobs and you're in your interview. So we always teach that uh, to our students to make sure that you use every single uh, bit of knowledge that you, that you gain through the program and apply it in, in practice. Uh, we also uh, encourage students to, uh, you know, think in terms of uh, what is needed on the market to, uh, you know, use this design thinking, strategic thinking uh, practices. And we, we teach all of those through our modules. Um, you know, something that we put a lot of emphasis in this program is also sustainability. So making sure that uh, those uh, new products or services have some kind of sustainability component. And that's something that our judges also in that previous uh, Food uh, Innovation Challenge noticed as well. How many student products and programs uh, projects actually had that sustainability component, which is really important thinking about diets, how they can be sustainable, how can you bring in products which are innovative and then good for the environment and for the, um, for the society as well. Um, Joe mentioned innovation is at the core of what we do, what we teach, and we want our students to apply that innovativeness in every role that they're going to be uh, you know, taking on after the, after the uh, MSc. Uh, so, uh, our graduates, uh, when it comes to different roles, they go in many different directions. This program is going to equip you with so many transferable skills. Um, and we see that we're going to hear from our students later on as well, that the skills, uh, you know, are suitable for food uh, companies, international food companies, but also food related companies, uh, you know, in different types of departments, such as the marketing department, for example, research development and so on. So our graduates go in many different directions. Some of them uh, go and work for uh, biggest companies in the food sector. Uh, some of them also become entrepreneurs. And we are very happy and proud to support uh, our students who are graduating and who are then deciding on their uh, next steps. Uh, so uh, I'm going to uh, now uh, hand you over uh, to uh, Joe. 
So just to, to finish yeah. off the, the introductory part, um, the Applied Food Industry Centre Research Project, this is the internship or placement part of it. It builds on what has been done in the, uh, the taught part of the programme, I guess. And when we were designing this, we focused on having a research project. So not just kind of a thesis, we want to move away from that. The idea is that you'd come up with a research question and you'd solve that question for a company because wherever you go to an industry, you're going to be solving problems. You're going to be asked by your boss, by he or she, you know, to, to we have an issue here, please go off and solve this for us. You know, so you need to come up with kind of research questions. You need to think about your solutions, your methodology. And so this is a key part of the program. I think it's a, it's a USP in a sense. It gives um, students real life experience of working at a company solving a problem it's not just an academic exercise and i think this combined with the thought part really uh differentiates the students when they go out into the workplace and we also find a lot of students who do their applied food industry center research project with a company end up working for that company and so there's great examples of that so there's a lot of support from a placement officer for example and you're guided by your mentors but basically it's an internship with a focus on solving a problem, basically. So in terms of graduate attributes from the program, what are we looking for? Well, we're looking for students that, you know, are innovative, I guess, that are entrepreneurial, that think in an entrepreneurial way, that are curious, independent thinkers, for example. Problem solvers is a key area I see from a lot of companies. They're looking for students who can problem solve, you know. So when you work with a company, can you take what you've learned and apply it in a new situation? I think we really try to get a, that across uh, in this program. So, for example, we do, we do what we call a whiskey challenge where we get different parts of the, the class or the cohort to argue different points on a, on a business strategy, for example. We get students to develop their own ideas, their own products, for example, and, and back up their strategy. We get them to pitch their ideas, for example, to um, panels. Uh, we get them to think about, uh, you know, leading responsibly or sustainably, for example. So these are all the key points we're looking for. So in terms of getting in touch, you can see our emails there. Um, that, so if anybody has any questions on that, I think what's really important now is you actually hear from current students and you also hear from some of our alumnus, basically. So this is the structure of the program. Now let, let you listen to who our students are doing it at the moment but also students who've been successful from the program. So back to you, Lana. Thank you, Joe. So uh, I would like to invite our, our first uh, guest uh, student, so Madeline O'Connor. Uh, Madeline is a current student here at Food Business and Innovation Program, and uh, she is uh, with uh, Glanbia. She's the, the Glanbia Scholarship uh, RD. So we would like to hear your story, uh, Madeline. Thanks, Lana. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Madeline O'Connell, and I'm a 23-year-old from a place called Mallow in County Cork. I went to school in Colossus very Butterland, and I studied food science for four years. I thoroughly enjoyed this course and achieved college scholar in each academic year and finished second in my class. Food has always been a major interest in mine, and I was studying food science that made me realise I would love to be, have more of an impact in the food industry if I'm more on the business side of things. That's why I chose Food Business and Innovation Masters. In terms of how I found out about the program, there wasn't just one way I found out about the program. It was through a number of sources, for instance, through UC lectures, careers fairs, LinkedIn, which is a great way to find out about courses and to connect to people, and through friends who actually studied the courses before me. Uh, all sources were extremely positive in feedback. Um, my biggest motivation to join the program was the vast opportunities it has once completing the course and the different career opportunities afterwards. I chose to do this course over others because it has both a research project and work placement element, which other food business masters do not have. And I think experience is just as important as books as it gives students the opportunity to apply what they've learned in the classroom into real life business settings. Uh, one of the main highlights of the program was how welcoming everyone was and that the lectures started from the basics, which is really reassuring as I had not studied business before, not even in my leaving search. Uh, I also enjoyed working on the business plan with my group where we came up with the idea of a hybrid protein bar. And at the end of the semester two, we had a Dragon's Den pitch, which was really thrilling and exciting, as Joe and Lana just mentioned previously. I think one thing that would stand out to me 
and that I'll carry for the rest of my lifetime is the presentation skills I acquired as this course gives students so many opportunities to get in front of the class and to build your confidence and to give the lecturers a break from speaking. Uh, currently, I'm working with Glambia Nutritionals as a commercial intern, and it mainly consists of working from home with a few days in either Dublin or Kilkenny. I'm lucky as I get a taste of everything from working with the marketing team, the commercial team, the product management team, the R&D team, and more. Uh, I have some exciting excursions with Glambia coming up. For instance, I'm going to a voice food event in Geneva and Switzerland in early May where I'll get to see all the upcoming food products and trends. And I'm also currently working on my research project, which is due in August, so I'm quite busy at the moment. That's that's great. That's amazing, Madeline. And uh, it sounds very exciting as well, going to Switzerland. That's yeah. a fantastic opportunity. So I would like you to tell us just a little bit more about this Glanvia scholarship. So how did you find out what was the process like and then what kind of new opportunities does uh, scholarship open up for you? Yeah, so I found about the scholarship again through LinkedIn and actually UC lectures um, from food science. Again, it's a really good scholarship to get because it's a fully paid scholarship. Uh, in terms of how to apply for it, it opens and closes during summer. So everyone be careful not to miss the dates because they can definitely pass quickly when you're enjoying your summer. Um, so definitely don't miss that. Um, for in terms of how to like during the process of the uh, scholarship, you have to write an essay, and if you're successful, then you'll be called for a short interview, which kind of takes place from the end of August, kind of start to start September. So uh, don't be booking any holidays there if you get through. And uh, um, if I was to give anyone a tip, is that just to be yourself and to research Gambia themselves. Um, Again, in terms of the opportunities the scholarship has um, given me, um, I kind of, it's allowed me to focus all of my efforts uh, into my studies in all aspects of the program from, and prepared me for a career in dynamic world of food business. Uh, the support and guidance Glambia has given me throughout my studies has been phenomenal, especially my mentor, Colin Lynch. As I mentioned earlier, Glambia has already kickstarted my career and offered me so many chances to see the food industry on a global level and I think every student um, it's important to have a global mindset most definitely again as Joe was saying previously everything reverts back to sustainability and problem solving and that's definitely one thing that Glambia has given me so far. That's fantastic Madeline and we wish you a best of luck with your uh, further steps and with your uh, research project as well. Thank you Madeline. And no, no. Uh, I would like to invite uh, our second uh, current student, Travis Treadwell, and he is a little intern and he's also an entrepreneur in, in making. So, uh, Travis, uh, tell us a little bit about your story with MSC FBI. Yeah, thank you, Lana. So, as Lana said, my name is Travis Treadwell. I'm originally from the United States and I am here in the third trimester for the MSC in Food Business and Innovation. So my background's a little different. My background's in hospitality, uh, hospitality business, restaurant management. It's what I did my undergrad in the States in. Um, so I've worked in restaurants, cafes, bars, hotels for several years up to the, coming to Ireland for the UCC program. Um, and I wanted to, I had graduated my undergrad and had been out of school for a couple of years and wanted to go back for a business degree. Um, I didn't have a business or an entrepreneurial idea in mind, but I wanted to develop that skill set and kind of work on those skills. Because while there were business classes in my undergrad, they were very overarching, kind of broad, didn't really specify anything. And I felt like I just hadn't gotten the chance to really use any of it. So through research, I found the Food Business Innovation Program. And, and here we are about a year and a half later. Um, and that was my biggest motivation, though, was that entrepreneurial skill set, the uh, thinking entrepreneurially, as Joe said earlier, that being able to problem solve and Kind of take problems apart and figure out what we want to solve and how we're going to do it and step by stepping it um, and that's been a big highlight from the program as madeline alluded to with her project earlier the ability to get with a group of people work on a project we did a, a food truck that specialized in serving dishes made out of alternative cuts of meat such as awful like liver and kidney and tongue and reducing food waste to create these very chic menu dishes and uh kind of bring a new target audience to that market. 
Um, and that was an idea that we came up with in, you know, middle of September. And then between September and December, we had a concept, we had a name, we had a look, we had a menu, and we had presented it to the class two or three times. And then just between January and March, we had developed the financials behind it, the whole promotion plan, and we're ready to do a professional level pitch um, at the end of the class. Um, and in addition, the breadth and, of, and the variety of the classes, as well as mentioned in that PowerPoint between like sustainable food systems and global food policy, which relate a little bit more into my own personal research project that I'm doing currently. Um, and those classes, as long along with like economics, more commerce-based classes, uh, things like that. That's that's fantastic, Travis. Uh, Travis, and it really kind of like sounds extremely exciting. So, uh, if I was just kind of like a student, you know, considering this uh, MSc uh, in food business innovation, um, to to do like what kind of skills do you think that you gain throughout this program, and you're still gaining them, obviously, that help yeah. you uh, the most in your entrepreneurial and uh, professional path. Well, outside of, I think, general skills that you would get just from this kind of program in general, like outside of just like research skills, which you would get anywhere and presentation skills, as Madeline said, while I worked on really, really hard, I think for this program specifically, it is that seeing coming up with an idea and actually getting it to a professional level. Um, I felt like even though like, you know, if, if the project is a first class honors project, that's one thing, but to be able to present it to actual entrepreneurship office representatives and members and have them give feedback. And uh, earlier was mentioned the business idea challenge. And we brought our project, we brought Beyond the Cut to that challenge and presented it to actual members of the entrepreneur office. And they really liked our project. We actually won the award for the most sustainable project there, along with a little bit of a cash prize, which was nice. But it's one of those, again, taking this class project that we work on and having it hold water in a sense that if we were to go to um, an office and ask for a Leo Primer grant or some kind of startup grant, uh, that this thing that we just did in class would actually merit money, would merit some attention. That's great. And uh, we wish you best of luck with your uh, research project and also in the entrepreneurial journey. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. So we're going to move now to uh, our two students, uh, Kate and Rachel, who have been through the program. And now for several years, they have been uh, in the industry in the different roles. So I'm going to invite for uh, Rachel Kerry. Uh, and she is at the moment digital account manager at Greenhouse. A nice background there, Rachel. So uh, I'm interested uh, a little bit uh, in your story. Thanks, Lana. And yeah, like you mentioned, my name is Rachel. So yeah, I, I did commerce as my undergraduate in UCC. And, you know, I, ma I majored in marketing within commerce. So I kind of had that interest going into it. And I had studied business before, but I really wanted to get something that was really practical. So I found commerce was quite theory based and I wanted to kind of develop my skills a little bit more, but also use it within the industry. So yeah, I started looking for a master's that would suit that. And I went to these kind of webinars as well and, you know, listened as well to everyone who had done it before me. So um, I decided that the FBI master's was definitely the best option out there for me. Not only was it really practical and, you know, it was getting me into that whole food industry that I found was really like interesting. And, you know, it's really active. It's not an industry that's ever going to go away. So um, it's really interesting for getting jobs afterwards. But I suppose what sold it to me was the fact that there was a six month placement at the end. And I just found that was a really good, like um, Joe mentioned, it's a stepping stone really into industry. And it's, just, it's, it's about getting your foot in the door places and really kind of setting yourself up. So yeah, the, the masses itself was really, really good. Like the class are really close knit, which I found was a big difference from the commerce group that I had come from because you've got about 400 people in your class. So it's really hard to, you know, work with people multiple times because you've got different project groups and everything and um, but within FBI I suppose you're a really close-knit group there's still 40 or 50 of you if not more but you're really familiar with the people that you're working with and it's, it's really good and there's a really good sense of uh, I suppose like group work and teamwork throughout the whole the whole masters which is brilliant um so I found the best part of it really and what's really helped me with my job at the moment is that it was so practical and that the the problems that we've solved throughout the whole masters, I'm actually using them now today in my real job. So like you mentioned, Cologne came in and we've actually just worked on 
the actual rebrand for Cologne ourselves here in Greenhouse, which is the agency I'm working in. So it's really practical. And as well with that Dunn's uh, crab sauce, we actually designed the packaging for that. So it, it has such a link like to the actual jobs you're going to do afterwards, which is brilliant. Um, and then I suppose the support that you get throughout the whole Masters from yourself, Lana, but also Joe and Ronan, who's not on the call today. But, you know, you're really accessible for finding out, I suppose, the opportunities that are out there because it is such a broad industry and you really don't know when you're going into the likes of a grad program or a master's what role you're going to end up in or even what your in, your biggest interest is. So you're really helpful in kind of narrowing the mind and kind of seeing the opportunities that are out there and, you know, bringing in speakers and those industry projects and examples. It was really, really helpful. So, yeah, it was a brilliant master's. I definitely recommend it. Like the year itself absolutely flew. Um, I know I did end up finishing the Masters just as the pandemic started, so it wasn't the best timing, but it still worked out really well. So, yeah, I'm working in Greenhouse now, which is a creative agency based here in Cork. So I'm the digital account manager, so I work a lot on social media, but also websites and, you know, bringing brands, not only physical brands and packaging and design and all that, but also these brands have to live online as well and it's becoming such a huge area for brands to actually exist so that's what my my role is at the moment is navigating that whole digital space so yeah I'm really really enjoying it. That's fantastic Rachel and uh, hopefully I'm going to uh, get you to do a little bit of a digital part of my module uh, next year as well just to, to share the experience because it really all comes back to, to you like you know after you graduate like you want to have that knowledge and then you want to bring it back to the students to see how yeah. it all uh, works out for you uh, i'm going to go back to questions too but there is just one thing that i wanted to ask you so what yeah. did you do for your uh, placement or for your project yeah so i did my placement i had applied for a placement in greenhouse and um, so they were one of the companies that came into us um so I was really holding out for them I was really hoping they were going to come in because I was so interested in agency work and in branding in general so um I applied for Greenhouse and I did my placement within Greenhouse so I was a digital account executive so it was really really interesting because like no two days are the same at all in here you've got so many different clients and brands coming in so we work with the likes of small artisan you know local produ producers from Ireland which might come in with just a product and they don't have a brand yet so we'd help them get started up and we work really closely with the creatives in here so all the designers and um, you'd brief in you know what the brand essence is to be you do all the background research myself and as our team and then you brief it into creative so it's really really interesting um so i did my placement there for six months and within that we found that a problem we were having within greenhouse or that we were seeing clients come to us with this problem was that during the pandemic everything obviously went online and there was a huge focus was put on social media and especially for small local businesses it was about connecting their actual physical like it could have been just a market stall that they have at the farmer's market like how are they going to convert that business now to online so that they can survive basically within the pandemic so that's what my research project was based on it was the importance of social me media to small artists and producers so it was brilliant and we've just taken on our new student from the masters as well so Kate has just started with us last month and um, so she did food business as well and um, so she's getting on great yeah that's that's fantastic and thank you so much Rachel I'm going to come back to you with a few questions questions a little bit later so I'm going to invite our, our second uh, student who did as well this program a few years ago so we have uh, Kate Scannell and she is a senior consultant within the business consulting with Grant Thornton and again a very interesting story so uh uh, Kate, we are very uh, looking forward to, to hear your part. Hi, Lana. Thanks so much for um, for having me. So um, my name is Kate. I am a past pupil of the MSc FBI. So I graduated in 2019, which seems like a very distant memory at this point. So I think my year was the first year of, um, of the Masters. So prior to doing the Masters, I completed um, a BCom similar to Rachel with German in UCC as well. Um, which I enjoyed. I enjoyed the course, but I felt it was a bit too broad. And again, similar to what Rachel was kind of saying about the course, it was very theoretical. I felt I didn't really have much professional experience once I graduated. So I think I was kind of caught at crossroads. What did I want to do next? Um, and I found out about the MSc FBI and it was exactly, exactly what I wanted. So part of my undergrad 
Um, I did some modules with Joe and Ronan in food business and development, and I had a real passion for them. I really, really enjoyed them. Um, so the master's kind of helped me with the, the challenges I was facing at the time in terms of I was able to really enhance my sectoral knowledge, specialize in an area that I had a real passion for, and also an opportunity to gain work experience, which I felt I was just kind of lacking at the time. Um, so it seemed like the only the only right right option for me. Um, I think most, some of the most memorable highlights I have from the Masters was the Food Entrepreneurship and Innovation module. So our group we were basically tasked with coming up with a product and taking it all the way from conception to writing a business case and presenting it back to a panel of experts. Um, this module is something that has is a module that's really stood to me in my professional career, um, just because of all the aspects that you have to consider as part of that module are still very applicable in my day to day role with with Grand Thornton, um, which would be another highlight of mine as well would be my placement. So I did my placement with Grand Thornton. I started April 2019 and three years and 21 days later, I'm still still with them and loving it. Um, and I found all of the knowledge that I learned throughout the course has been so applicable in my in my current role. Um, so I'm on the business consulting team as a project manager, and we would cover projects with various clients from finance transformation, supply chain management, economic advisory, project and program management, which were all topics that were covered as part of the master's. So I felt when I started the course, I was really, or, or when I started my placement, I was really able to hit the ground running with the knowledge I had gained as part of, as part of the master's. Um, so I would thoroughly or highly recommend it to anyone who's considering applying. Um, it's really, it was a great launching pad for me starting my, starting my career off. That's excellent. Thank you so much, Kate. And uh, I would like to then, you know, kind of uh, ask a few questions and uh, together with, with Rachel, like, because again, you have been a few years out of the program. So uh, Kate uh, and Rachel, um, you, you said a lot about the program and uh, a lot about the skills. So, in terms of your current responsibilities that you're doing at the moment in your roles, uh, how did MSBFBI prepare you for those, uh, those responsibilities? Um, so I suppose the broad broad range of modules, it's, it's, it's kind of a difficult one to say because while our modules were broad, they're also very specialized, which was great. Um, so I think my the report writing in terms of writing the business case, analytical thinking or analytical and critical thinking skills as well as presentation skills have really stood to me in my career with Grand Thornton. Um, report writing is our bread and butter, it's everything that we do. So it was great to be able to have that knowledge that I learned during the course and kind of hit hit the ground running with with Grand Thornton. Um, so I think that kind of those very technical skills have really stood to me over the last three years. Um, additionally, as well, because we also work with a lot of agri-food clients, I find myself going back to a lot of our course content from three years ago, which is still very applicable today if we're tendering for different agri-food business or for writing agri-food reports. Um, I would still use a lot of a lot of the content that that I picked up during during the course. Yeah, I would say I'm, I'm the same. The the modules themselves that we have within the masters, they're they're really well picked. Um, they cover a lot of bases within like the actual food industry. So when I started in greenhouse, we obviously branding is our main thing. So we look at food branding for about 90% of our clients, but um, it was all about kind of working as part of a team and everything we do as a project. So the masters itself really helped to, I suppose, learn how to work as part of a project team, the different roles maybe that are, that are within the team. Um, and obviously how to bring a project from start to finish. I know we had a, a project management um, module and a digital module within the master's. So that's exactly what I'm doing now. I manage client projects from start to finish. And, you know, I, I really work with the creative team here as well, which is brilliant because, you know, I didn't want to just do a whole admin based role. I still wanted to be within a creative role. So um, that digital module really, really helped to be practically um, applicable to what I'm doing today as well so it's brilliant yeah yeah and kind of following up on what Rachel was saying I suppose about the the courses being very well picked they are there's a really nice range of 
um, I suppose, food sector and non-food sector courses. Um, so while you have, you gain specialist experience through the masters, you're not pigeonholed into, into any one thing, which I think has been great for me getting my foot in the door with professional services firms as I have a balance of that specialist food sector experience, but also non-food sector experience, which is, can be applicable to any yeah. industry or any client as well, I think is, is a real benefit to the programme. Yeah, definitely. That sounds great. And uh, again, like very, very uh, unique experiences both of you have and, and quite different roles, but it shows uh, how the programme really gives you transferable skills that you can really use in many different areas of industry and food related or even non-food uh, related industries as well. So uh, while I have you there, like what kind of advice would you to give uh, to students who are now, you know, considering you know yourself two or three years ago when you were thinking which kind of uh, master program should I be uh, taking on? What kind of advice would you would you give them uh, in terms of this uh, program? Um, I suppose I think the advice that I would give is, I suppose, assessing where you are, are currently and where you want to be. It doesn't have to be five years time, even in a year's time or two years time and see what you need to fill, fill in those gaps. So it's like, for me, it was a lack of work experience and a lack of specialist knowledge, which is why this master's really helped me kind of overcome overcome those challenges. Um, I think that would be my kind of, yeah, my, my best advice is where you see yourself in a year. Yeah. I know people say five years, but it doesn't even have to be five years. I also think it, you won't regret it if you if you do do this master's. It, I haven't regretted it a day since I've started it. So, yeah, I think my my experience was at the end of commerce. I was between either going into a, a grad role, into a graduate program, or else you know taking on a master's or going trying to get into full time employment. So for me, that was the biggest decision: was do I tie myself into a company in a graduate program, or do I try to specialize my skills a little bit more so I think choosing the master's was definitely the right option for me because it's it is only a year of your life you know and part of that year is made up of placement as well so you're getting the best of both worlds um and you're really specializing I suppose within an industry that is growing so rapidly and is so diverse that you're not pigeonholed into any one um, job when you come out of it and I think part of the master's really helped that as well is that you really go through the different types of roles that are out that are out there like you might have a really specific niche interest and I guarantee you there's a role to to kind of match up with that so the careers guidance within the master's are brilliant you obviously meet them plenty of times throughout the year and then you've got Ronan and yourselves as well that um, really help to guide you and to kind of figure out what where are your interests and like where how do you match that up with a job within the industry as well yeah that's I think kind of taking that extra time like that that 12 months as Rachel was saying like it is only a year yeah. but it's I think and Rachel you could probably agree as well it's stood to the both of us we started to pace it with the company and three years and two years later we're still there um that I don't think I would be in the same position had I not taken those 12 months to really see where I wanted to go and and do the master's yeah totally agree with that definitely I think like I've no plans on leaving Greenhouse. So I think definitely if I hadn't done the masters, I don't think I would have got my foot in the door here. So it's definitely stood stood to me as well. That's fantastic. And thank you so much, Rachel and Kate. Um, uh, uh, I'm hoping to, to come back to you a little bit later, just as a reminder to our audience that you can uh, ask questions by typing them in the chat. So uh, we are going to move to questions a little bit uh, later, but uh, now we are going to talk about something that uh, I think uh, Kate mentioned, which is uh, the career uh, services and the overview a little bit about career opportunities. Uh, so uh, I'm going to uh, hand it over uh, to Joe. Thank you very much, uh, Lana. Really interesting talk, listening to those students, actually very fascinating. Two things that struck me listening to both the current students and the alumnus students is the fact that they all come from different backgrounds. So the program is geared towards people from all different backgrounds, which is interesting. So you all start at the same level, basically. I think also what's interesting from both Kate and Rachel's point of view, you know, with a very good uh, applied food industry research project or placement, you can end up working with the company. So it gives you that professional, I think as Rachel put it, or Kate, the foot in the door 
part of the thing that you, you get into a company, show them how good you are, and then you develop from there. And, I, you know, I think they've really blossomed in terms of what they offer. So in terms of careers, what can I do with careers? We'll go briefly through this. Firstly, we have a dedicated uh, work placement manager, Gronia North, who works with the students and works with industry in terms of identifying opportunities, placement opportunities, for example. Uh, we get a lot of feedback from industry. So industry know what our students are capable of. Uh, industry were involved in building this master's. I mean, when students, uh, some of the students, Rachel and Kate, talked about the modules, I mean, trust me, we put a lot of work into selecting these modules. We really moved around. We look at best practice across the world. We looked at the balance between very food and non-food. And again, when I look at graduates on LinkedIn, with students in food, but also in a lot of allied industries, for example. So to me, it's about the rigor of doing a one-year master's, learning about innovation, entrepreneurship, creativity, with all the modules, with your placement, and then using that in, in whatever industry you're moving into then, basically. So every year, we have lots of placements for our students. It's a very competitive process, um, and students get very good placements from it. We work with you on developing your CV, for example. We work with you developing your presentation skills. Uh, what amazed me from the students we heard was the wonderful presentation skills they had. I mean, both Rachel and Kate could have sold the program to me, basically. They're really wonderful in terms of got, how they got their message across. And I think that's so important. How you pitch your ideas, how you sell yourself to a company, for example, and all these skills we develop within the program, for example. And on placement then, or on the Supplied Food Industry Research Project, this is done usually between uh, March and the end of August each year. So you st start with a research question and you uh, complete that over those months, basically. The majority of placements are in Cork or in Ireland, but also we welcome any students who want to travel further afield. And we have a lot of contacts abroad if students want to uh, take up any places abroad. So Lana. Thank you, Joe. And, uh... The, the great news is also that in, in recent years, there, had, there has been a lot of investment in this, uh, you know, uh, work placement uh, system and especially in IT. So uh, in, in this uh, program, you're going to get the uh, positions advertised through a dedicated IT system. And as Joe mentioned, the uh, dedicated uh, placement manager is going to be, you know, communicating with you. And good thing is that they start to communicate with you very early on. Uh, they come in even in uh, September, October, uh, you know, introduce what placement is all about, how it's going to look like. They guide you through the process and uh, they ensure that, you know, they answer all of your questions if you have any about the technical aspects and so on. And um, also uh, in this uh, IT system that is dedicated to uh, making sure that you get the best experience uh, during this application process, um, there is, uh, you know, also an opportunity to, uh, you know, look up what is, uh, you know, uh, what kind of uh, placements are offered, uh, look up the um, companies that are offering those placements. Also, you're going to receive one-to-one -one, uh, advice from the placement officer, but also from the UCC Career Services. Now, there are now award-winning services. We're very proud of them here at UCC. They're going to be giving you, you know, professional advice as well, whether you're going to placement or later after you graduate, uh, what might be the best fit for you. They're listening to you, what are your needs and desires, and then they point you in the right direction. Um, so some of the uh, companies that uh, our students go to placement, you had an opportunity to see on the slides and uh, alumni were talking about them. Uh, there are many different roles from brand ambassadors, for example, for, um, you know, the uh, social media, uh, sales, um, you know, many different uh, research uh, aspects as well with different companies, you know, from uh, Musgraves, uh, Ornua, Dairy Gold. Uh, we also have, uh, you know, uh, the relationship with Colin Sully, for example, a Hyde Whiskey, uh, uh, the a Lighthouse uh, and Black's Brewery, for example. So very different uh, companies which uh, are all kind of part of this big food industry, but also related to food industry. So uh, there's a huge choice, but also the process is competitive. And uh, therefore, our placement manager is making sure that you know how to do a, a CV and that you know how to present yourself. Uh, they really work on that uh, educational part of your professional development. So they're not going to leave you alone, uh, you know, kind of like battle this whole process. They're really going to help you, really going to be supportive throughout the process. 
Uh, and again, there are many different online tools that uh, this I new IT system offers. For example, you can record yourself, uh, you know, see how you look when you're answering questions for interview. There's even a little scoring system. Uh, you can also ask for feedback as well. Um, and the good thing is that the career service actually offers you advice free of charge while you're doing your masters with us, but also 12 months after. Uh, so they really want to support you in your uh, career selection. Um, so uh, again, uh, great opportunities. Uh, you, you see uh, and heard now many different roles that this uh, MSc is uh, preparing you for. Um, so what we're going to do now, we are going to look at some of the questions uh, that the audience uh, had uh, for us. So uh, I'm going to read them. And uh, again, we are looking forward to answering them. And uh, again, if you do have any questions, uh, please do type them into a chat box. So I have here a few questions for our students. So uh, it would be great uh, to kind of like hear their uh, perspective. So the question was, uh, what was it like for you to go to the entrepreneurship project for two semesters uh, and develop uh, those new ideas. I know we have a mixture now of current students and alumni, but what was the experience like for you, someone who's interested in this one? Uh, I would say, I think it's just the, the, the time frame itself is a really good time frame. Like the two semesters is definitely needed because it allows you to like, like to, just to give an actual like timetable. So we came up with the idea in September and I believe we had to have at least like the base concept and be able to present like, you know, three minutes on, Hey, this is what we're doing. And this is what, like our, the problem we're solving, how we want to solve it, the methods we're going to solve it, target audience, like the basic information by middle of October, um, and then you take the next couple months to kind of develop more specifics on that, get the concept nailed down, get a name, um, so on and so forth as well. And get like, again, really nail down the concept, the target audience, all that. And then spend the last couple of months figuring out the finances, the promotional tactics. So that two semesters, while it, it seems like a long period of time, you're also doing all your other classes and things like that. So it does go by very fast. But at the same time, it's it's not like you're feeling rushed to come up with the idea. The idea has time to breathe and like organically grow. Our idea, we didn't even have a name for like four months. Like it took us a really long time to come up with a good name because we were just going back and forth and changing minor details. And I think if it was a one semester class or something shorter, it would have been a lot more rushed. So this was a lot more organic of, hey, here's like come up with an idea and work on it throughout the next couple months. Um, so that by the time March rolls around, you have everything in a row. Yeah, I think I was the same as well. The the two semesters really helps because you actually have time to, I suppose, really think about your project and to really prepare all the different elements because it is a really practical project. Like it's it's like as if you're bringing a real idea to market. So it's from start to finish. Um, and I think it's really useful because you can obviously within your team, you're all going to have different roles. So you're going to have someone who's in charge maybe of the social side of it, the digital side of it, the actual supply chain side of it. So it's really good to kind of try out those um, those roles within the group that you have because you can see what you're good at, I suppose, what you have a real interest in. Um, and it's just a really practical example. And then obviously bringing it to market where you're actually presenting it in front of like a Dragon's Den style um, pitch it's brilliant like it sounds really nerve-wracking but by the time you get to your second semester um speaking in front of your classes like second nature like there is no there's no issue there so yeah it's a really good project and the fact that it's over those two semesters really helps yeah definitely and I think I know for me it was actually one of the modules that I definitely enjoyed the most because you're in with the group of your course mates and it's a great way to kind of flex your creative muscles and it's the anticipation to presenting it at the end of the year kind of all builds up to it. So I thought it was was really enjoyable and you definitely need the two semesters for it, but it was almost kind of a nice, that course was always a nice break to step away from the kind of very heavy content in terms of supply chain or Excel and mm -hmm. get to get to know your classmates a bit better and, and really kind of get to get the your creativity flowing. That's fantastic. Thank you so much for this one. I hope this answers a uh, lot of questions that our uh, potential students might have. Um, now, this, this question is uh, for Joe. 
Um, uh, the students are wondering what background is required for this program. Is there any requirement for the business background to enroll in this program? Uh, no, we take students from all backgrounds because, again, I think Madeline alluded to it that we started the basics, basically. So I think this is one of the really interesting aspects of the program. And I think Kate just kind of mentioned it slightly there as well. You know, when you're working, doing group work, like wherever you work, you're going to have to work as part of a group. Like, so, for example, if you're in Greenhouse or if you're in Grand Thornton or Glanby, you have to work as a group in a project area or whatever. So you have to understand people to come from a law background, an engineering background, an arts background. And again, they all bring different skill sets to the pot, basically. So again, we're more and more realizing that it doesn't matter what background you come from. It's the skills you possess in innovation, creativity, entrepreneurship. Um, so any background is welcome on the program. I think what's really important is, you know, is that so somebody and I think you can see from our students that you're enthusiastic about doing something like this. And I, you know, I know it's so such a cliche thing to say, but really what you put into it, you get out of it, basically. And it's really important if you go into it enthusiastic, think of it as something that's really going to add to your skill set. You know, that's where you really benefit. And I think once you do this program, there's no other programs you need to do after this. Once you do this, you're into working, basically. You have the skill sets. And, you know, it's great to hear the students present here today with their ideas, what they think, because, again, that sort of feedback is great for us as well. But it's also great to see the presentation skills, which I'm very impressed by. That's true. And you kind of like mentioned uh, uh, one of the things, again, one of the questions was what are the uh, key USPs of this program? And I think what we've heard from the students, I, I'd say that we're practical is, mm. is very much important. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, when we were looking to design this program, we had a master's in food business, which was a two year program with placement. And we had a master's in food marketing, which was one year with no placement. Students didn't want to do a two year master's, but they wanted to do placement. So we dovetailed both in together. We took the modules that we and like nothing is perfect, but at the moment, we took the right modules like supply chain, branding, digital media, innovation, entrepreneurship, sustainability, policy. Like we we brought the best modules together, we thought. I think the other thing that's really important is all the staff teaching at our research active. So it's cutting edge in what they're doing. So when I'm doing something innovation on gluten free or labeling or something on functional foods, we're researching in those areas. So the students getting the best area with people in retail who are experts in the area supply chain experts, digital media, where you work, Lana, it's all experts teaching what to do. But also you then bring in somebody from industry, you know, uh, and that's really important. So somebody from Greenhouse, for example, really adds to what we do, for example, from Fallon, from Killowen, from Glambia, telling us the industry side of it. And that really adds to what we do because it's the practical skill sets. You know, these are people work. The food industry is a really you know, roll up your sleeve type of industry. You know, it's where you get the experience from. It's where you learn about innovation. Entrepreneurship is about, you know, failing, trying again, failing, trying again, that sort of thing. So, yeah, and I like particularly when uh, Rachel and Kate uh, mentioned, uh, you know, the, the skills like, you know, the branding and digital media and uh, and again, Kate, you were mentioning about writing reports. I know we were a very kind of like particularly when it comes to giving you advice on how to write reports, the industry style reports. So, uh, Rachel and Kate, I'm sure you can agree that those types of skills that you that you learn are definitely something that you're actually going to be using immediately after you're done. Yeah, definitely. Um like straight away from when I started my placement, I was using like research that I had done throughout the year. So I know Kate said it as well that like you can go back to your notes from the masters and like I'm pulling from them all the time. And you know, it, it was the whole skill about being able to spot the trends I think within the food, the food industry, which are the whole drivers behind, I suppose, the types of jobs that are out there and the types of food that we're seeing on the market. So um yeah definitely those projects were really helpful because you can just practically apply them onto into your new role as you start and obviously i was working on social media at the start so it was really um it was a really good stepping stone from the research i had done into actual application of that and in the industry as well yeah definitely i think um like i i know it was a year or two ago um <clears throat> i used some content from 
um, our course with Joan Ronan on functional foods to tender for a job with a functional food brand up in the west of Ireland that we ended up winning that job as well and a lot of the tender came from that that content um, we do a lot of business cases as well so obviously our food entrepreneurship model came um, came in great in handy at that point for me as well as um, Alan, Alan's category management module um, those kind of transferable analytical presentation communication skills have really stood to me and it's something that I use every day on client projects um, and something I think that has made me stand out as well in work too, being able to come on a placement and hit the ground running straight away saying, I know how to write a business case, I can present to a client, um, that I think it's something that has really stood to me throughout the throughout the course of my career. That's that's fantastic, and we couldn't say it better, Joe. Um, so uh, now we are going to move to the the final part, which is going to be more about the application process. But before we go into that, uh, I would like to thank all of you, uh, especially our students, our current students and alumni, for uh, taking time to talk about this program. We've heard so many great insights. It's a very unique, hands-on, dynamic uh, master program in food business and innovation. Uh, it gives you great transferable skills that you can apply immediately, so very practical. Uh, we have wonderful graduates, as you can see, and uh, please do get in touch with us if you have uh, any questions about the uh, the program. So again, thank you all. And now I'm going to uh, hand it over to uh, Tricia Shopnessy, and she's going to tell us a little bit more about the uh, application process. So uh, Trish, uh, over to you now. Hello everybody, my name is Trish O'Shaughnessy. I'm the Postgraduate Program Manager here in Cork University Business School. I'll be talking you through how to apply for a postgraduate program in post. We'll be looking at deadlines, we'll be looking at the entry requirements and the application process itself. So to start off, we're first going to look at the deadlines for offers and for completed applications. So as you can see here, two of the deadlines have already passed in January and March. Our next rounds based systems will take place in May. So for all completed applications received by the 3rd of May, offers will be made by May 17th. For all completed applications received by July 1st, offers will be made by July 15th. So we have two more closing dates. But just to make you aware, uh, we do have some programs which are extremely popular and we'll close early if we reach the uh, quota of students. So I would advise you to apply online as soon as possible. So how to apply online is what I'm going to talk about next. So if you are applying for a taught postgraduate program, you apply online at www.ucc.ie forward slash en forward slash apply. So to put your mind at ease, the application process is quite a simple process. Uh, on average, it takes between maybe five or 10 minutes to apply for a program. The majority of our programs, over 90%, do not have uh, supplemental questions where you have to answer why you want to do this program. In the majority of cases, it's based on your undergraduate degree results that you've finished or it could be based on your undergraduate degree results for a conditional offer if you're in fourth year. So there's one application and one fee of 50 euros, but you can apply for up to two programs on this application. Now, you don't have to apply for two programs if you know exactly what program that you're applying to, because each program will go to the program administrator or to the program director to make a decision on your application. So this brings us on then to the preference-based system. It's not preference-based. So it's not like the CEO, CAO. Uh, every applicant application that you actually make will go for a decision. So it's not necessary to complete all application uh, choices if you don't want to. Um, what will you need to make an application then? So you will need your PPS number. You need your UCC student number. You, if you are a UCC student, and you'll need your credit card details and an active email account. So this is really important to highlight that active email account. All correspondence will be going through true email. You won't be receiving anything in paper format. So you may be we may be looking for additional information, or we may be sending you offers, and all those will go through that email account that you actually provided as part of your application. 
So you've made your application online, what happens next? So you will receive confirmation emails. Uh, hopefully you will receive some offers. So if you are a fourth year student, either in UCC or in another university, you will be getting a conditional offer if you meet the conditions. So conditional offer usually based on a second class honours grade one or a second class honours grade two, depending on the entry requirements. So once you get your final degree results, if you do meet the entry report, if you do meet the conditions of your offer, you'll be automatically offered that place. You'll have 14 working days to either accept or decline your offer. Uh, you also may accept one program, but then this offer could be superseded if you're offered another course which you prefer. So for example, you might have applied for an MSc in finance, one of our finance programs, and you might have also applied for an MSc in management and marketing. You could have been offered a place on the MSc in management and marketing, but what you really wanted was a place on the MSc in finance. So you would accept the place in management and marketing, once you're offered a place in the MSc in finance, once you accept that offer, then it automatically declines your management and marketing offer. So just to be aware, you can get multiple offers, but only you can only accept one program. So that's the kind of overview of the taught application process. If you're applying for a research program, it's slightly different. So the application process where you apply online is the same. It's www ucc.ie forward slash en forward slash apply but before you apply you actually need to contact the department first to put you in contact with a supervisor who would have the capacity uh, to supervise you in your area of research you'll also need to submit a research proposal to the supervisor and um, the taught programs all start in september but with the research programs there's four different start dates so you can either start in July, April, June, or October. But we'd normally advise you to apply at least two months in advance, and there's no specific closing date for research programs. So that was a brief overview of the application system for postgraduate programs here in Cork University Business School. So just to highlight a few important uh, items which we talked about this morning. Uh, do your research and do talk before you, apply, before you apply online. So you can do your research through the CUBS website. They have a lot of information there on careers, on the entry requirements, on the fees for the program. You'll also have listed there the program director's contact details and the program administrator's contact details. So please don't hesitate to contact either of those if you have any questions on any program within CUBS. Do be aware of the closing dates, but also be aware that some of our programs do close early as they are extremely popular and we will close as soon as our quota is reached. Do check your entry requirements before you apply online. Make sure you're eligible for the program. And finally, as I mentioned, do check your email throughout the summer as you will be receiving updates on your application. So thank you again for your attention today. Um, my name, as I said at the start, is Trish O'Shaughnessy, Postgraduate Program Manager, and you can see my email address there. So if you do have any questions, please feel free to contact me. I'd be happy to talk to you. Thank you.